Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this RPG Maker MV tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make a custom mining system. So, if you're like me and you're excited over Yanfly's new item synthesis plugin, um, you've probably made a ton of new items to set up your crafting and everything. Um, so, you're probably going to want to do that for this uh, mining tutorial. So, to start off, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our database and we're going to create new ores. So whatever uh, types you want, create as many types as you like. I've selected 13. I might add more later, but uh, right now I figure 13 tiers is good enough. So make your new uh, items. They don't need anything special. Just give them no scope, never occasion, not consumable, and regular item. Whatever prices you like. Then we're going to make the item that they're going to turn into. So we're going to turn the ores into ingots. So we're going to do the same, uh, the same thing, basically, but we're going to do a note tag. So I'm going to put a link in the description below for all the plugins you're going to need to save some time. So just get all those plugins and uh, then uh, I won't have to go through that. So we're going to put in a note tag using uh, brackets, capital S on synthesis, space, capital I on ingredients. Then you're going to type in the, in the name of the ore that you're using and the number that you want to consume to make that item. So now that we've got our, our ores and our ingots, let's make our new types. So let's go over to types. We're going to go to elements, we're going to create a new element called mining, we're going to create a new skill type called mining, and we're going to create a new weapon type called mining. After you've done that, let's go over to our states because it would be a good idea to include a, a buff potion for this. So we're going to create the miner's potion. And we're going to, it's going to need another plugin, but I'll put a link in the description for all the plugins you need. Type in brackets, element, boost, 19, uh, well, the, the number for 19 will change for you depending on what uh, number your element type is. You can see that uh, my mining element is 19. So wherever your mining element is, you're going to use that number for this state. So put that number right there, colon, and then 150%, or whatever percent you want. Uh, the duration, it's up to you. I would recommend 10, 20, maybe 30 turns for this. Let's go to our items and make that mining potion. So we're going to give it a name, a description, an icon. Let the player know that it's going to increase their mining potency by 50%. Give it whatever price you like. Put it to scope for one ally or all allies. Occasion, always, or battle screen, up to you. Consumable, yes. We're going to do add state. So that's right here on effects. We're going to go to state, add state. Add that new state we just created for miner's potion. 100%. Now we're going to need to create a pickaxe. So we're going to create a new item called a pick, or a new weapon call the pick, pickaxe. It's important that this is a weapon. We're going to let the player know that this is what's used to mine ore. Give it whatever parameter changes you want. We're going to make it the attack element of mining. This is important. It's got to be no physical, just mining element, the new element we created. Uh, we're going to use another plugin, Yenfly's uh, Weapon Unleashed plugin. We're going to go uh, bracket, replace attack, and then we're going to put mining in there. So remember the capitals and the spaces and all that. We're going to select the weapon type of mining and the animation, give it whatever animation you like. I've created a custom one. So we've got our items, we've got our weapons, we've got our types, but now we need to make the, the ore itself, the enemies. So how we're going to do this is we're going to use the, the action sequence battle system to do the mining. <clears throat> so we're going to create a new enemy. So we're going to call it whatever the name of your ore is. We're going to give it 1000 HP. You're going to give it no MP, one attack, one magic attack, because it's not going to have any pattern. So go in here and delete the attack so it doesn't do anything. You're going to give it 50 defense, 50 magic defense, 50 luck, and 50 agility. Now for the drops, you can change uh, the amount of ore that it drops. But I've, I'm using another plugin, L uh, Yanfly's Extra Enemy Drops, to add uh, the chance to get a bunch of ore. So you're guaranteed one ore, but you can get up to seven. Let me see. One, two, three. You can get up to eight if you uh, get lucky and you can change these around to your liking don't give it any experience or any gold because this is going to be a side thing unless you want to uh, for me I've decided this is going to be apart from the gold currency I'll have it uh, work with a separate currency when the new plugin comes out and uh, it won't give experience because you're getting items for this really now here's where all the magic happens in the traits so this will be the the bulk of the work but once you make it once you can copy paste it so Go to um, the traits and add a debuff rate, uh, zero percent for every trait, so it can't be nerfed at all by any skills. We're gonna go down any state that can cause damage or reduce anything. 
make it completely immune to that. So we're going to go state resist uh, all of your offensive states. So it can't take on any of these states. We're going to give it another parameter to um, make them scale up so that they need a certain skill level to uh, be able to mine them correctly. We're going to give it HP regeneration. So we're going to give it 10% HP regeneration. That's an EX parameter. Here's where you make it so that they can't just hit it with their sword. We're going to give it the ele element rate of mining over 100%. Um, I started with 5 times 500% for the weakest one. And as you go down, you can see that the iron ore is 400%, the, the silver ore is 300, 200, 190, and it just gets harder and harder. So you're dealing less and less damage as you go down. Um, you have to give it 0%. You have to give it 0% to all other element rates so that it can't take damage from anything. So every single other element, give it times 0%. And then just give it uh, the ability to take damage only from mining. And then you can copy this, paste it right underneath it, increase the HP, increase the stats, change the ore type that it drops, or the percentages, reduce the amount of... Uh, or reduce the yeah the amount of damage it's going to take from mining but everything else will stay the same so you're just going to change this change the drops change the stats make sure that it still has the hp regeneration copy paste that do that for the next one and i'll just show you mine so if you want to copy the stats if you're not sure you can just look at the stats and copy them you can pause the video if you have to um, i found out this this works pretty good in this order now i'm using yanfly's armor scaling another plug and i'll put it in the links in the description below so um, you can see how it works with uh, with or without armor scaling. Um, come up with some creative names for your ore types. So now you see the stats. Now we have to do one more thing. We have to declare a variable. So create a new event. We're gonna we're gonna delete this event, but we're gonna need a, a, a space for a variable. So go to tab one, control variables. Go to the top here and find a free slot. Whatever free slot that is, just take note of it and call it mining skill. I'm using slot 30, so that's what I'm going to reference in the damage formula. So we've hit that, we've hit OK, and now we've got mine, we've got our variable number 30 is our mining skill. We can delete that event. That's just to create the variable. So now we've got our mining skill variable. We're going to go to skills because we're replacing our basic weapon attack with the skill. So we have an item or a weapon called the, the pickaxe that's using the skill mining. So we need to create that skill mining. So go to your skills, create a new skill called mining. Let the player know that this is what they use to mine ore. Don't give it any MP or TP costs unless you want to. Make it a, a skill type in the new skill type of mining. We're going to give it the scope of one enemy and we're going to give it the occasion of battle screen. Make it a certain hit or physical attacks up to you uh, and give it whatever animation message uh, that you like. You could even make it require uh, the mine, a mining weapon. But since it's actually being called from only one method, it won't matter. So we're going to go HP damage. We're going to give it um, the element of mining. This is important that this skill has the element of mining. Now we're going to go A.ATK plus we're going to type a V and in brackets we're going to put the number of that variable we just created. In my case it's 30 so this number will be different for you depending on what variable you called mining skill. Um, no variance unless you want variance. Critical strike yes unless you want no. Uh, one more thing you have to do to increase your skill as you use mining. So the more you mine the, the more damage you're going to do with this skill. So we're going to type custom execution in, in brackets. We're going to type uh, VAR space M space equals space dollar sign game capital V on variables dot value and then the same number that we're referencing in the damage formula we're going to call it right there. Make sure you do an end line which is a semicolon. We're going to do plus plus M. If you change this around to like I or something it would still work the same. So it doesn't really matter as long as you increase the same thing. <clears throat> Then we're going to go dollar sign game capital V on variables dot set capital V on value. And we're going to type in that same number of 30 uh, that uh, it'll be different for you if you give it a different number. We're going to put a comma and then we're going to put in that variable we created. So M in this case. Close the parentheses and inline. And then we're going to close the custom execution. Underneath here is just an action sequence. This is basically this, the same action sequence I use for my attacks. So if you have the action sequence for attacks, you can paste it in there, but it's not required. I will scroll down if you want to copy paste if you haven't already got it or ask me in the comments below and I'll uh, link it to you. All right. So now that we've got our variable set, we've got our skills, we've got our items created, we've got our weapon created, 
We've got our enemies created. We need to go to troops and add those enemies to the troops. So we'll go over here, change the maximum, and, and add some new troops. So we'll scroll down to the nose, we'll scroll down to those new enemies, and we're going to add those and name them. You can auto name if you need to, if you want to. That's what I do. And then just add all of those enemies so that we can call them. I believe that's it. We need to. Did we already do the miners potion? I think we did. Um, so that's it for that. Now we're going to create the event. So create a new map and uh, make it look like whatever you want. We're going to create a new uh, a new event. We're going to call it Bronze 01 or whatever element you want. We're, we're going to give it an image of one of these or whatever you want it to be. You could even put this right in the wall. It'd be fine too. Once you've given it an image, we're going to make uh, show choices. In the choices, we're going to say mine the, insert your element name here, or not right now. Default choice one, cancel two. Inside the event, we're going to do a battle processing. So we're going to call on those troops that we just created. So in this case, it's the, the bronze ore troop. And we're going to say can escape. And we're going to say if win, we're, all we're going to do when you win is erase event. So that would be on tab two, right under character, erase event. And what this is going to do is when you mine it, it's going to disappear. But when you leave the, the, uh, the mine and come back into the cave or the mine, it'll be there again. So you can uh, go in and out, in and out. If you don't want your ores to be repeatable, where you can only mine in one area one time, instead of an erase event, do a self-switch A here, create a new page, and do a self-switch A on. And then it'll never come back. So I believe that's it. Let's take a look at this in game. I've also done an auto run event inside my dungeon. So I've uh, changed, made this an auto run and I've changed battle background music to none. So when you're mining, there's no battle background music and then you do an erase event. But when you do this, you have to make sure on the outside of the, the cave, you do another one that changes the auto run, that changes the battle background music back to its original one, and then you do another erase event. So when you go in there, there'll be no battle background music when you're fighting the, the ore. And when you come back out, um, it'll restore it so that when you're in battle, you'll hear the battle music. Let's take a look at this and see how it works. Oh, one more thing. I forgot. This is important. At the beginning of your game, what you want to do is create an event and declare all of your variables. Whenever you're using your, your uh, variables in a damage formula like we are in this skill here, the mining skill, you see how we're referencing variable right here? Whenever you do that, you need to declare your variables before you call on them, otherwise it'll just do zero. So at the beginning of your game, on the first cutscene, you're going to create control variables and set that uh, mining skill variable to whatever you want it to start at. I've set it to start at one, but since uh, I'm testing it and I won't be going through this intro, I need to set it again. So let's go back to the the oasis where I have uh, the pickaxe. So I in this uh, I put a bunch of stuff. Uh, we've got our potions, we got our pickaxe, and I'm also controlling variables. And for the sake of this demonstration, I'm leveling up my mining skill to 150. Every time you try to mine, it's going to go up by one. So every t every attempt to mine will give you one more skill. So this is equivalent to me attacking a rock for 150 times. Now, let's try it. Before I equipped the pickaxe, uh, there's actually one more thing. Sorry. Um, I want to make sure I get everything. So we've created that new weapon type. But we haven't awarded it to our classes, so they won't be able to use it. So what you need to do is equip weapon mining. So go to your classes, and for each class that you want to be able to mine, you need to uh, go to the, the traits and under equipped, go add weapon, t uh, weapon type, and you're going to go mining so that they're able to use the pickaxe. All right, third time's the charm. <laughs> I promise, I think, I think we got it now. So we got our pickaxe, and we could equip it right here. But before we equip it, I want to show you what happens if you just try to attack. So we're going to go in here. We can say not right now, but nothing will happen. 
We mine the bronze. It's going to start a battle. There's no battle music going on. You can see that the, the ore is regenerating. If we try to use a tech on it, nothing will happen. If we try to use our sword on it, it'll do zero damage. Let's see what happens if we use Bushido damage. Still does zero. It, it's immune to everything since we set its parameters. But we, this is why you want to be able to, be ret uh, to retreat from it. That way, if they uh, bring in their sword, they're not uh, game over because they're locked in the battle. They can't get away because their, their weapon doesn't do any damage. You could also alternatively use a plugin that lets you change your weapon in battle. That would be a good plugin to add. I might actually add that. So now we've got our pickaxe equipped. Let's mine the bronze with our pickaxe. And you can see we're doing damage. And after we've uh, destroyed the ore, or just, yeah, destroyed the ore, we got four of the possible eight drops. And with that ore, we can go to our synthesis menu. And we can craft ingots. We've got all these types of ingots here. We can craft these ingots. We can see that we now have a bronze ingot there. Let's uh, try another one. So that was the bronze. Now this is the iron one. You can see it's regenerating for a bit more, and it's uh, taking a little bit less damage. But it's still, at 150 skill, we're able to take on the tier 2 ore. We've killed the iron ore, and we've got some. Now let's try the harder one, the silver one. You may also be noticing that my damage keeps going up. So that was 588. Now it's 591. Now it's 594, and every time I do this, I'm getting skill, I'm leveling up my uh, my mining skill, which is doing more damage. But you notice that it's not quite enough to break the regeneration. It's almost there, right? We're almost at 600, so now we'll start doing one damage at a time, but that's going to take forever, right? You can still get a critical hit, and that'll help. So that's why I've allowed critical, just so when, in this case, if you don't have a mining potion, then it's still possible to do this with a critical hit. But we do have a mining potion. I forgot to give it an animation, but if we give it, uh, we use that skill, we have the, the state added, so we've got 19 more rounds to do this. That's going to add potency, so that now we're doing quite a bit more damage. And if you're using the, if you saw my top 5 video, you've seen that my favorite, one of my favorite plugins is the speed up. This is one case when it would be really, really useful to have that, uh, Silent Cypher's uh, speed up plugin. We've killed the silver ore. We've got some drops. We can go to our synthesis menu and craft a silver ingot. And if we were to craft enough of those, we'd be able to make a silver dagger or a silver katana, different weapons. But I did uh, start myself with uh, eight of the best ingots in the game just to show you. When you craft an item, now I didn't make it so that they were hidden, but. Um, they're all colored. All the items are colored. So when you first craft an item, uh, it'll show you the actual color of all those item types. So we can go to equipped. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for being awesome. Continue to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And if you did like this tutorial and you're really hyped about the crafting system, uh, now I've given you a harvesting system. So you can combine those two together and make something truly epic in your RPGs. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you in the next tutorial.